Greetings and welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ago, and my co-host today is Sean. Sean, we're going to talk some B5. Yeah, we are. Babylon 5, in the beginning. So that would be like the next one on our list, I guess. Yeah, it's going probably, to probably the last one filmed. Uh, no. <laughs> Near the end, I guess. We're just taking shots in the dark. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got the Lockley one, and then they got the uh, one where the B5 actually looks like a real space station. I should have remembered that because we literally just discussed it two minutes ago. We did. Well, this one's about Londo telling stories. Yeah, to kids. Yeah. To explain why his planet is a hellhole now. Yeah, his planet's on fire right now. I believe it's 2278. And uh, Centauri Prime is, you know, suffered the wrath of the shadows. Uh, so he asks the kid, like, what do you want? And he does a better job than what Lando did when Morton asked him that question. True. But kids always have better answers than adults. How strange to have come so far and to want so little. Well, Sean, as much as I'd like to talk about that sexy French ball chick, mm. um, why don't you just tell us the gist of this episode? <laughs> well, this movie, yeah. Um, most of these plot points we've been told throughout the series, but I think this movie was a way to kind of tie it all together. You see the Battle of the Lion, you talk about uh, the Black Star being destroyed, all that kind of stuff. And just to kind of give it like a, a bow on it, I guess, to like the, the be in the beginning of, of how that all came about. Yeah, it's everybody's backstory. Um, like Delenn, who's a half shell in this one. Yes. Um, got rid of that full shell. <laughs> Ninja Turtle and a half shell. Turtle and, half. Uh, <laughs> she's she's basically on this little journey. Her and Dakota are like trying. Uh, they're they're talking to Lenon, who's the head of the Rangers, mm -hmm. and uh, he needs more people, more money. He wants to get the Rangers fully formed. Right. Because they ain't ready for shit yet. You operate here at our sufferance, Lenon. If you force the issue. The Rangers may pay the price. Ignore my request, and we shall all pay the price for their stupidity. And no one else believed that the Shadow War was coming, except yeah. Lon at this point. Well, I guess Kosh. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dukat kind of believes him. Kind of, so. Well, yeah. Dukat was pretty wise, but he also had counsel. <laughs> um, so they, they decide that they're going to take the long way and go to Zaha Doom, mm -hmm. and then they run into an Earth Bruiser, of which like, Sheridan turned down command on. Like, right, probably good call. Yeah, <laughs> good call. And uh, the captain was not smart. Started scanning them and uh, took it as a hostile intent. Though the Mimbari running with open gun port ports isn't probably the most friendly thing. Well, to okay, say. okay, but I, I do want to just put a flag there for a second and say this is one of the reasons I like Babylon Five a lot uh, compared to Star Trek. Star Trek's great, but everyone can understand each other too well on Star Trek. Like aliens who have never met before, they can like kibitz in English and understand each other. This was this made total sense. If you ran into, um, you know, a uh, lost section of humans and you couldn't talk to them, you would have a situation like this where one group would think one's being aggressive, and but we're just being friendly and they, they wouldn't understand each other, right? So I did actually like that part of the of this. So. Paul, as much as I agree with you, I'm going to put a flag in that <laughs> and just say, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. <laughs> okay, one episode. <laughs> one goddamn episode. And it's just like a poem thing, okay? <laughs> Did he, it make sense? I got. We were, hold, I got. We're, holding, <laughs> we're holding our spear out for them to see. Like that. Yeah. that, that, that those are our weapons. Yeah, it's a sign of respect. Exactly. And the humans are like, oh no! Yeah, the humans decide to just unload and mm -hmm. fire at them. And, As you do. And it ends up killing Dakot. And yeah. so they're all like, uh, the Grey Council gets together and they're like, oh, what do we do? And who's going to take Dakot's spot? And Delenn's like, I guess I am? Yeah. Because they only got the three casts, warrior, religious, and you worker. Know, worker. Yeah. And so she's just like, kill them all. That's right. She's mad. Yeah. <laughs> so they basically wipe out most of Earth. Like, they just they well, you know. kill so many colonies of humans. The, the weaponry is so advanced, mm -hmm. they don't do well. No, they don't do well. No. But in doing that, that is how they discover randomly picking up Sinclair. <laughs> yeah, at the Battle of the Line, where we know Sinclair was in his little Star yeah. Fury, yeah. and he's going to attack, and he's just charging. He's got no other options. Mm -hmm. And they just trans tractor beam him aboard, and they beat the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. And then they, just, they hold their little triangular device. Triluminary. Yeah. 
Trilominary confirms it. The human has a Minbari soul. And not just a Minbari soul. The soul of Balin. I still can't believe it. And that tells him uh, that he has a Minbari soul. Yes, yes. And then finally, uh, well, at least the Great Council is aware that uh, the Mumbari, but the, the Shadow War is going to come, and that the humans are, are a vital part of that. So, obviously, like I was saying, it kind of, you know, kickstarts the whole, you know, motivation of the whole show, basically. Yeah. If, if Dylan had just gone into Dukat's quarters earlier and saw that <laughs> message saying, humans are important, don't wipe them out, then, you know, like, maybe she wouldn't have attacked Or going up to Dukat and said, hey, boss, you seem kind of troubled. Yeah. Do you want to talk to me? You know? There's also another secret in Dukat's corner. Thorlon secret. We get Kosh and Asshole Kosh. <laughs> yes. Asshole Kosh. Kosh being the red dotted one. That's right. What is his name? Ukulesh? 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 Like, I never heard that name before. All I knew was he was like, call me Kosh. But you're an asshole. So I'm going to call you Asshole Kosh. <laughs> All these years. That's how I've known him. The truth points to itself. I do not understand. You will. But... Go now. Go. Before it's too late. Um, we get to meet Franklin. As, uh, this is after, For I guess... the first time. This is after Sheridan took out the Black Star in this. He's all, like, um... Had some battle, and the Earth crews are just getting their asses kicked. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so he's pretty much weapons down, disabled. Puts, uh, some nukes on the asteroid and just mm -hmm. calls out a distress call. Mm -hmm. So they come in to wipe them out because they're assholes too. <laughs> and uh, he just blows it up and that destroys the Black Star, which is the legend of Sheridan. It's true. When yeah. he gets there in that uh, second episode or second season, he's just yes. like, I killed the Black Star. I'm the badass who had the only victory in the Earth in the War. Victory, yeah. <laughs> then they surrendered after that. I'm just it's, saying. Just saying, it's something to do with this. This yeah. guy right here. <laughs> Here's that battle of the line where they just didn't lose any ships. No, no, it was me. That's right. Yeah, so uh, Franklin, I guess he's, we, we learn, because you said we get the origin of everybody. So Franklin's like doing all his medical stuff and he's just being a doctor following the doctor's code, helping out anybody. Mm -hmm. So he knows shit about Mumbari. Yep. And so they're just like, hey, Franklin, you're under arrest for whatever shit you were doing. And uh, so- Do you, hey, you want to make a biological weapon that hurts the Mumbari? Yeah, <laughs> you should do that for us. Yeah. My job is to save lives. In my opinion, I- I don't give a rat's ass about your opinion, mister. I want those notes. I can't do that. Excuse me? I don't think I heard that. I cannot allow my notes to be used in creating a biogenetic plague that could conceivably wipe out an entire race. Um, so him and Sinclair and was it Jakar? Because Wanda was refusing to sell them weapons. He didn't want to get involved. And I think Jakar arranged it and the uh, three of them went off to go mm. meet uh, Lenon. Mm. And then of course, as uh, he always seems to be the bad guy, Wanda uh, <laughs> sends some people out there to destroy it. And then mm. they just basically get taken prisoner. Which happens a lot in Babylon 5. Yeah. And then the Mimbari beat the shit out of them. Because <laughs> they're an asshole. <laughs> and then I guess the Len eventually lets them go. Uh, we even get Ivanova's like earlier story where she was like 17 with short hair. Mm -hmm. Didn't look 17. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like you were saying, it's kind of a Saved by the Bell kind of moment. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are high school students. <laughs> and we meet her brother, and he's a pilot. She's like, I want to be a pilot. No, 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 don't do it. And then he goes off and dies. So that's a good lesson. Maybe, yeah. Maybe don't. Don't, don't, yeah. do, don't do things. But she's still enlisted. <laughs> and then she uh, you know, became friends with Sheridan at some point. We didn't see that in this. Man, they gave us all that recap and no friendship between Sheridan and Ivanova. <laughs> Well, but, but to your point earlier, like, there's too much, I thought, connecting the dots of <laughs> yeah. all these characters who know each other later. Again, like, does, does Franklin, why does he pretend like he's never met these people before? Is it, like, so top secret they can't talk about it? And, like, it just seemed that was the only part of the movie for me that was kind of forced was this kind of, you know, like, oh, we have to involve everyone, the whole cast. And it's like, eh, you know. It's just... The only thing that was really top secret was, like, wiping Sinclair's mind for 24 hours. As you said, yeah. there were some consequences to that. Yeah. And I actually read there was some talk of bringing him back for this, but he uh, had some issues at, at this point in his life, so he, he couldn't, so they just used uh, footage from the first season. But that would have been interesting to... I'm kind of still flesh out super that. happy that they brought him back at all for the fourth season where he was like Valen. No, oh, it was perfect, yeah. Yeah. Third, third season. Yeah. Nobody likes you in your accurate numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Chris, okay? I don't have all day just to run through every single this, The internet will tear us to shreds, okay? Yes, I'm sure they will. 
All seven of you that watched Babylon 5 with us. That's right, you know what you're talking about. She's out of range of Nuke 2, only one left. See you in hell. Well, Sean, we jumped all over the place, but that's pretty much the episode. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lando tells the school kids to like, you know, go away, and then yeah. he talks to the little French bald chick. You know, Centauri women, not too bad. Yeah. I mean, they're bald. Some of them, the ponytail ones, I, I think I prefer a girl with a ponytail if she's mm. mostly shaven head. I mean, I think Ilea was the first shaved head woman that was like, hmm, but this, yeah, no, Battle on Five does good, good work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Natalie Portman and V for Vendetta just didn't do it for me. It's, I think it's because you saw the hair coming off. Yeah, maybe. And she was not happy about it. No. She's yeah, it's not good. She's upset, I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So Londo had four wives, mm. but uh, you know he he loves Centauri Prime, and so watching this, and he's such a great actor, but mm -hmm. like watching this, just he's at the end of his journey here, mm -hmm. and his his entire planet's on fire, and you know he's got that symbiote thing on, mm. <laughs> and he calls for Delenn and Sheridan, who I guess are his prisoners. Yeah, um, that's kind of a time jump thing too, because we even get um, Sheridan jumping back there from another time, seeing this. Well, that's why he's telling the story, isn't he? He's like, I remember when I first met these people. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously he lets them go. Right. So, and then Jakar, uh, I don't know if it happens at the end of this, but Jakar definitely strangles him in that chair. Probably that night. I, I think, yeah, It's if it's not shown, it's definitely inferred that that's pretty much the end of Mono's life, I think. One-eyed Jakar. Yes. Even though he got that glass one. Maybe. Or did he leave it in Delenn and John's quarters <laughs> on the wedding night? <laughs> Continuity. So, Hard to remember. So that's how Mimbari do it. Yeah. <laughs> Our son is safe. That's huh? all that matters. John, I love you. To the future, my old friends. Final thoughts, Sean. I liked it. You get a lot of the the dots connected uh, to the beginning of the show and what would eventually come. I just don't like kind of the clunky bit with uh, uh, Franklin and them getting, you know, picked up by the Mumbari and then Delenn and like that whole thing was just kind of, we have to include the whole cast. But other than that, I thought it was really neat and of course how uh, J. Michael Straczynski like ties everything together just so amazingly. Like he planned all this stuff out and it's just brilliant. Yeah, I, I agree. The, the connections that this like writer has come up with is just ridiculous like the amount of like little things that is just like oh that's from that that's from that yeah the like, foreshadowing yeah even a simple line of like oh you did a better job with that question it's like all the way from that season from the first season with Morton it's just like my god mm -hmm. so yeah. you know if there's any lesson we can take from this is that you guys need to start watching Pebble on 5 yes please I know it's dead I know please. it's gone yes. um, I know half the cast is gone which is sad mm -hmm. um, but uh, the show is great the special yes. effects yeah. yeah, just just I mean, drink a little bit. Yeah. Or, or don't wear your glasses. Like, just, like yeah. it, was, it was at the start of CGI, you just have to let it go. Yeah. I mean, you watch shows from the 70s, like Star Wars. Yeah. That was all like models. What's your excuse now? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, in conclusion, go watch Babylon 5. It is great. Yeah. Well, as always, thanks for watching. See ya. If we are wise, what is born of that pain matures into the promise of a better world because we learn that we can no longer afford the mistakes of the past.